ಸುಧಾರಣೆ ಸೊ I guess not everyone was able to make the new time because our numbers are usually half of what they are at this time. But we'll begin. We'll begin with a continuation of our pastime of Lord Chaitanya and the Chamkazi, which is getting towards the end of the discussion between the both of them. If you remember, um, Lord Chaitanya challenged him on the principal of But why do you kill your mother and father, the bull and the cow? Um, Kazi finally admitted that what's in their scriptures is not really solid evidence. It's meant much speculation and additions placed in for whatever reasons. And then finally they talked about the kirtan and how Nishringadev appeared and, and uh, warned the Kazi not to uh, interfere with the Sankirtan movement. And if he did, he would destroy him and all the meat eaters. <laughs> Kazi was paralyzed by fear after seeing Lord Nishringadev. And then he related that to Lord Chaitanya. And now there's a the continuation of the exchange talking about people who were complaining at the beginning due to the kirtan. Well, but connects that to the present day situation of people, especially even those who are practicing some form of spirituality cannot appreciate the chanting of the holy names of the Lord and consider it a disturbance. So we are on verse 212 in uh, chapter 17. Okay, so here we go. Hindu Shastra Ishvara Namal Mahamantra Jani Sarvaloka Sunilan Madre Tara Vira Haya Hani Ani, according to Hindu scriptures, God's name is, most, is the most powerful hymn. If one hears the chanting of the name, the potency of the hymn will be lost. So these are the offenders, those who are worse Chandi and Vishara. They're giving their wrong interpretation of scripture. <laughs> And Prabhupada's purport, in the list of offenses in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, it says, Dharma, Vrata, Tyagya, Hutari, Sarva, Subha, Kriya, Samya, Api, Pramada. To consider the chanting of the holy name of the Lord equal to the execution of some auspicious religious ceremony is an offense. According to the materialistic point of view, Observing a religious ceremony invokes an auspicious at atmosphere for the benefit of the entire world. Materialists therefore manufacture religious principles in order to live comfortably and without disturbance in executing their material activities. Since they do not believe in the existence of God, they have manufactured the idea that God is impersonal and that to have some conception of God, one may imagine any form. 
Thus, they respect the many forms of the demigods as different representatives or manifestations of the Lord. They are called Bhavishwara Vadis, or followers of thousands and thousands of gods. They consider the chanting of the names of the demigods an auspicious activity. So called Swamis have written books saying that one may chant any name. Durga, Kali, Shiva, Krishna, Rama, and so on, because any name is all right for invoking an auspicious atmosphere in the society. They are called Pashandis, unbelievers, or faithless demons. Continue up. Such Pashandis do not know the actual value of chanting of the holy name. Foolishly proud of their material birth as brahmanas and their consequently higher position in social order, they think of the other classes, namely Kshatriya, Vaishyas, and Sutras, as lower classes. According to them, no one but the brahmanas can chant the holy name of Krishna. For if others chanted the holy name, the potency would be reduced. They are unaware of the potency of the Lord's name. The Brihat Naradiya Purana recommends Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam, Kalam Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Gati Anyata. Hmm. So we'll uh, speak something. Hmm. You'll find that although you may go to India and meet many people there, you'll find People have so many different ideas. What is religion? What is God? What is the process to, to realize God? What is the, in other words, yata mata tata pata, which means any and every concocted idea of religion is being worshiped in some form And religion and God are both eternal. They cannot be concocted or added to. What is religion? Dharma, Shaksha, Bhagani, Bhagavatam, Panitam. And religion means to understand God. Religion means to follow a set of principles given by the Shastras for the realization of God. Sometimes people say, well, this is your religion and that is my religion. But religion is one, as God is one, as truth is one, religion is also one. Although there may be what we call faith, let's say, paths of faith, the, the religion means to follow the honors of God. So one who follows the honors of God is religious. One who does not follow the honors of God and claims to be a religious or spiritual minded person is just, it's all pretense. It has no thing to do with reality. It's like you, you can't manufacture your own uh, certificate just because you've read a bunch of medical books and you maybe you have uh, went to school and studied a little bit about medicine and now you think you're a doctor and so you hang out your shingle with your name on you call yourself MD but it's use it's not really MD it's MAD you're just mad because real Qualification means certification. And certification means one receives certification by pro following the process. So, and there are symptoms for that certification as one progresses in the process. So it is, this is Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, there's a statement that Krishna makes in this age, people will take religion as irreligion and irreligion as religion. And um, this is quite common. If you ask 
anyone, your conception of God or what is the way to God, you'll find that each person has a different answer or an unsure answer. Because people like to speculate, especially about God. But Dharma Shakshat Bhagavadi Puritam Malhajano Yena Kadasapada. The path of religious principles is taught by the great souls. And one must follow in the footsteps of the great souls by rendering service to them, by hearing from them and asking regular, relevant questions pertaining to one's practice of spiritual life and the nature of God. So um, we must regularly listen to Srila Prabhupada because one thing about Srila Prabhupada is he speaks a lot about what is not, and that is important because before you can really understand clearly what is, you have to remove the garbage. In the Srimad Bhagavatam in the eighth canto, there is the landmark pastime, which is considered to be one of the most important pastimes. And sometimes it's labeled as the, the title of Bhagavatam, and that is the churning of the milk ocean. So in the churning of the milk ocean, the demigods on one side, the demons on the other side, the churning rod, Vasuki was the churning rope. And uh, you can leave the verse up. Um, as they were churning, the first thing that came out was not the nectar, but the poison. And only when the poison was removed, and ultimately Lord Shiva came and dispensed with it, only then could the nectar actually flow out. So before we have to, before we understand what really is, we have to hear also of what is not, because even what is, is mixed in a lot with what is not. So you've, it's very hard to find pure religion. That's why in the Bhagavatam, in the first canto, second chapter, the verse begins, Dharma projito kaidavo paramatma nirvatsaranam satam. Kaitavo means cheating. And uh, projito means to kick out. So the Srimad Bhagavatam kicks out all forms of cheating religion, which are based on material principles and mental speculation. So in order for us, for one to understand that, one has to hear clearly. Uh, I'll just make a statement in general. I find most devotees don't know what is Prabhupada's clear conception or spoken conception of what is the process of bhakti. You know, if you go to school and you are studying the subject matter, you expect to know it. So when the exam comes, you pass and then eventually you can graduate. But if you go to school, and you don't pay attention to the lessons, you don't do your homework, you don't show up for the quizzes. And then you think, well, I'll just come for the final exam. You'll fail because you're not prepared. The final exam is a culmination of everything that was given to you prior. And so the final exam is uh, death. Death is the final exam where one has to be fixed on the lotus feet of Krishna. And transcendental knowledge allows one to get a clear uh, hold on devotional service where we can progress 
as we progress, then it becomes easier and more natural to remember Krishna. To forget Krishna for the soul is considered an anomaly, a mistake, a misfortune. And to remember is natural for the soul. In the material world, the mater uh, a person may be engaged in devotional service and they think if I can remember Krishna, that's wonderful, but that's actually normal. It's actually normal to remember Krishna. To forget Krishna is abnormal because that's the nature of the soul's existence. And so the, here we find that in the name of religion, or in the name of spirituality, people come up with so many ideas. They even take the pure religion and try to explain it in their own way, such as as being done in this verse here. They say that you know, the holy name of the Lord is the God's name, but if it's chanted by unqualified purpose, poet, persons, it loses its potency. That means they think that God is material. If he's put into connection with something material, he becomes like that. Well, that is the problem. So one has to clearly hear regularly from Srila Prabhupada especially this Bhagavatam, because Bhagavatam is the clear presentation on the nature of the absolute truth, the clear presentation on the process of achieving the absolute truth also. So the verse goes on, or the purport goes on, for spiritual progress in this age of Kali, there is no alternative, no alternative, no alternative to the holy name, the holy name of the Lord. The holy name of the Lord, but the Sundays do not accept that the potency of the holy name is Krishna is so great that one can be delivered simply by chanting the holy name, as is confirmed. <clears throat> any man from any part of the world who practices chanting of the holy name of Krishna can be liberated and after death go back home back to Godhead, the rascal Pandit Pushandis. Shandi means atheists think that anyone but a Brahmana chant, can chant the holy name. Uh, otherwise, if someone else does, the potency is vanquished. Their judgment is that instead of delivering the fallen, the fallen souls by chanting, the holy name is reduced. They believe in many gods and they, and they think that chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is no better than any other mantras. Like you know, they may spout the shastras, they may even engage in worship, but they don't have any faith. They see everything as ordinary and material, and they make adjustments in order to satisfy their own senses. Because they're born in Brahman families, Prabhupada said they become proud instead of delivering the fallen souls. They, the holy name, they think that the holy name becomes important. Okay, continue down the page. And Prabhupada ends, Krishna Kirtan Kare Nitya Bada Bada indicate anyone can join the Sankirtan movement, you know. So this is mentioned in the second canto. People from the lower races, even Chandalas, Pashandis, lower class. It's not in others, they don't like the idea. Therefore, just like Prabhupada was criticized for making devotees in Western countries, because people from Western countries don't have any Sukriti, hardly. If they do, it's rare. And they don't follow any rules and regulations. There's no samskaras that are followed. People don't have any. Everyone lives according to what they, they think is the best for sense gratification and to improve their economic conditions. Mm -hmm. 
So what Prabhupada said, despite the fact that this is going on and we're being criticized, still we're delivering many fallen souls and making them fit candidates to return back to the spiritual world. So the, as Prabhupada says, the um, dogs may bark, but the caravan rolls on. So you'll, we're, we find our movement being attacked from all types of materialistic societies, peoples, uh, the atheists, the demons, the faithless, the ritualistic brahmanas. But because it's a pure movement, it cannot be affected by their attacks. So uh, therefore, one should not be concerned about what they say. We basically, we ignore them because they can't change if they change, it comes by a catastrophe in their life. But that that is up to Krishna. So he these, you know, just so this particular verse here, it just shows how people who think they know about God don't know about God. And this goes on a lot. They say in the material world, people like to discuss politics and religion. And they all have their own ideas, what is best, what is correct, like that. And therefore, nobody can really benefit from what they say, neither can they, because they don't know how to get the benefit of real religious. But therefore, the first thing one has to do is approach a bona fide spiritual master. But it's fashionable in this age, we say this age because it's the age of, the age of my opinion is right. It doesn't matter what my opinion is because it's my opinion, it's right. Maybe it's not right for you, but it's right for me. I got the mud cut the butt. This is the age of Kali, the age of speculation, the age of misinformation. <laughs> this is the biggest thing, what you get as information is just someone's mental, um, uh, you know, juggles, they juggle their mind around, they come up with every day a new philosopher comes out with some kind of philosophy that he thinks is right. So that's why Prabhupada spent so much time uh, telling us what is not, so we wouldn't become a lord or misguided by such things and think because if a person can speak nicely and has the power to convince people with, then they can speak anything and then people will believe it but the fact is Prabhupada said no matter what they say still we're showing success in our practice Many of the ladies are going back home and back to Godhead. So verse number 213. Kramera to me sabatamara jaya jana nimai bolaya tara karaha varjana. Sir, you are the ruler of this town, Panchatanya speaking. Whether Hindu or Muslim, everyone is under your protection. Therefore, please call Nimai Pandit and make him leave the town. No, the, no actually, these, these are Pashandis are talking. I'm sorry. They're talking to the king, and he's relating what, what they're saying. That's all. Mm -hmm. The word takor has two meanings. One meaning is God or godly person. The other meaning is kshatriya. Here, the Pashani Brahmins address the Kasi as takor, considering him the town ruler. So, when Prabhupada goes into a little information here, Brahmins are addressed as Maharaj, kshatriyas are addressed as as Takur, Vaishnas as Seta or Mahajan, and the Sudras as Chaudhuri. 
This etiquette is still followed in northern India where the Kshatriyas of justice, Thakur Saham. The Shandis went so far as to request the magistrate to expel Lord Chaitanya because he introduced the Sankirtan movement. Well, but we now turns to local. Fortunately, our Hare Krishna movement all over the world, especially, has become very popular. Generally, no one complains against us to have removed, have us removed from the city. Although such an attempt was made in Melbourne, Australia, the attempt failed because the devotees didn't go along with the restrictions and kept going out on the streets, getting arrested finally. Enough people took up the mission and we had support from popular people. And later on, they allowed us, they, they couldn't stop us, so they allowed us to go out on the streets. And so Prabhupada said, now we are introducing this into other cities, New York, London, Paris, Tokyo, Sydney, Melbourne, and Auckland. People are happy and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is going on and people are chanting and the results are very satisfying. Okay, so this, this movement of the Harinam Sankirtan is an eternal movement. It's the Yuga Dharma. It's been inaugurated by Krishna. So uh, devotees get out in the streets, make Sankirtan, organize your groups. We had another successful weekend this weekend with devotees going out. And we sold many books and uh, got people to dance to the Kirtan. Uh, people are, in general, a little bit they're very unhappy about the present situation. I know in some countries you can't go out, but if you can try to do whatever you can to spread Krishna consciousness in whatever way you can, that will be empowered by the Lord. <clears throat> and you will be successfully given the mercy of the Lord. And one who spreads Krishna consciousness is recognized by the Lord and their Krishna consciousness becomes solid. In other words, you become fixed in your devotional service. Okay, so we'll stop at the right at the hour and see if we have enough time for questions and comments related to what is real religion and what appears to be real religion but is not and what actually isn't religion. So these are some of the topics you can base your questions on. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, on, the, um, on this class, on uh, Holy Name, basically, and the importance of Holy Name in Kali Yuga, and chanting in Harinam. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself or uh, write it in the chat box and I can read it for you. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. This is an excellent topic, Guru Maharaj, because we really need to understand what Srila Prabhupada is giving us, the immense value of what Srila Prabhupada has given us, and to also uphold what Srila Prabhupada has given us, because there's so much nonsense out there. There's so much concocted philosophy. There's so much you know, frivolous nonsense that goes on in the name of religion. People come up with their own concocted ideas. So thank you for reminding us to really listen to Prabhupada's lecture every day. Now I'm definitely going to try and listen to one lecture every day. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, it's important. You'd be surprised if you listen carefully. You learn so much and you, you're being, you'll be amazed by what Prabhupada says. Not only does he present the truth, he presents it in a way that is clear and uh, interesting.
we have any more questions or comments hare krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glory to shri lapo all glory to you maharaj krishna jitesh maharaj uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful uh, reminder as well, well to hear from prabhu pad but um, what i have realized and i and, and it will follow a question which i am thinking about is that prabhu pad has made it very clear about the philosophy and the position of krishna and everything else and as mata ji said shri devi mata ji there is so much concoction out there so i have been or my thinking is maharaj and and i would like to um, get your feedback is that if we come across persons who are in that concocted philosophy then we should or at least what i try to do is try to preach them the right thing to or to point them to the right things uh depending on the persons because if we don't do it and if we think oh we just leave it then who will tell what's right i mean i'm not in any position of authority to 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 do that but to friends family at least i do try to tell them what is the right thing and and i do then point them out what they think is you have to think why something is wrong so w- w- would that be the right yes. approach to speak up yeah. the yes. right thing yes. Yeah, the instruction is there. Prabhupada has given anyone who comes into this movement, uh, if they speak about Krishna, immediately they become empowered by Shila Prabhupada. In other words, he's asked each and every devotee, and Lord Chaitanya did the same. He asked each and every devotee to be an instrument to spread Krishna consciousness accordingly. So when people give their own ideas concoctions um it's just like if a child does a wrong thing and the child does not like to be corrected and you might think well i don't want to make the child feel bad by not correcting them and then the child will continue to go on the wrong way and may cause problems to himself and to others so in the same way people have to have when we get the opportunity we should be able to speak up you know Prabhupad really liked when Srub Damodar Goswami uh, was at one of these um, conferences, scientific conference. There was one Nobel Prize uh, winner there. He was giving a talk, and he was explaining that you know that life is chemicals. and then he was giving his understanding when then shruti damodar maharaj said well if life is chemicals and if i present you with the chemicals can you produce life and the man said well i that i cannot say so they speak and they have ideas but they can't prove anything based on what they say but we have not only because science and we say that knowledge there is the knowledge is scientific science means uh experiment and result if you can't prove what you say then who's going to believe you because everybody says so many things so we just like people say well why do you What's the use of your chanting Hare Krishna? Well, we point to our devotees and say, "Look, these people they're uh, formerly, you know, they had all bad habits, and now they're chanting Hare Krishna. They've given up meeting illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and they're actually developing all good qualities. So we can see by the results that chanting Hare Krishna produces a transformation of good qualities." and people in general so we can show by example that that the philosophy does work <laughs> and not simply speak something and then change it the next day because you know we people who want to hear something new something different Yeah, so in relationship to your questions, yeah, if you get the opportunity, speak. But 
speak in a way that try to think about how you're going to present it. It depends on who you're speaking to and what the subject matter is. But generally, everything is there in Prabhupada's books. If you can't find it in his books, you can find it in his lectures. There's, there's no lack on any subject. Prabhupada covered everything in his lectures or in his books. It's not everything is covered in his books. A lot of stuff is covered in his lectures. So which are as good as his books. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, don't be afraid. You you have Krishna behind you when you speak, so don't worry. Don't worry. You're, you're supported by the best. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, this is uh, really such an interesting topic. And uh, I could very much relate to it because uh, <clears throat> I also have uh, someone uh, amongst uh, relatives who thinks that, uh, yes, I know God, I know what he thinks and uh, how he feels, but actually it's, it's based on, on nothing but, but speculation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also uh, would have a question because uh, sometimes uh, about different religions, because sometimes I have this uh, mm -hmm. feeling that uh, there, there are some differences based on culture uh, amongst uh, religions and uh, how much culture is important uh, in, in the sense that uh, for example, uh, we, uh, we wear a certain type of dresses like uh, dhoti and sari or cook a certain type of dishes because Krishna likes those. So how much these things are important? Well, as Prabhupada said, our movement is not a religious movement. It's a cultural movement for, it's a spiritual movement to to restructure the culture of the world from a material culture to a spiritual culture. So there is a spiritual culture which is transcendental to all of the mundane cultures that are in this world. So sometimes people mistakenly think that we are giving the Indian culture. It's just, no, we're not. We're giving a spiritual culture because what we see on this level within a certain geographical thing is a manifestation of the spirituality that has descended. And it's set up both in the, on the social, the, the uh, spiritual culture, uh, the material culture may also look like a spiritual culture, but the substance is, is not the same. So what we have is a spiritual culture and that's what we ask people to do. Now, sometimes people cannot accept the, the language, the dress, but these are externals. Hmm. Um, uh, I think there's a nice verse, maybe um, this verse was, would be very nice. Uh, Anjali, are you, are you still there? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Go to Srimad Bhagavatam. Sure, Guru Maharaj, I'm just opening it. Fourth, so eighth chapter. I believe. Fourth can to eighth chapter. Yeah, I believe it's text 35. Let me see. I might be okay. wrong. Let me just share my screen. I think this will answer your question if I can find this particular purport that Srila Prabhupada gives. Because okay, we'll wait 35, 35. This one, Guru Maharaj? 
Uh, yeah. Let's go. Let me open that. I, mean, I want to see the purport. I'm not sure if that's the exact verse. I got to see the purport yeah. first. Oh, let me see here. Go down the page more. Mm -hmm. uh, go down, go down to the next verse in purport. It's in this area somewhere. Let me think. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, and keep going down. Let me see. Next verse. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure where this purport is. I haven't seen it in such a long time. Uh, 38, go to 39. Prabhupada makes the point that, you know, it's not about one can adopt Krishna consciousness in any situation. It's not, it's not limited to a particular type of culture, dress, forms of worship. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to do a little research to find this particular verse. I'm not sure where it is. But that's the essence that time, place, circumstance, um, all these different things are irrelevant to becoming Krishna conscious. Therefore, one can adopt address a name of God, a, you know, when Prabhupada was asked in the beginning of his movement, you want everyone to eat Indian food? Prabhupada said, no, you can eat your own food, but make sure it's in the category of, of um, offerable. It has to be offerable to the Lord. It can't be based on violence. So, yeah, so, um, of course, we follow what Prabhupada has given us, but those who don't want to adopt the externals, such as a type of food, a type of dress, a type of language, or a type of worship, then uh, Bhakti Vinoda Accord addresses that in a, large, in a long article. That one can worship the Lord accordingly, according to their culture, their language, like that, and their set of rules and regulations for worship. The point is to become Krishna conscious or God conscious. That's the point. Actually, uh, what you said about uh, that this is not Indian culture, but uh, spiritual culture, it uh, really uh, made it clear for me because <clears throat> I remember once uh, Deva Kimataji was here in Hungary and gave a class about uh, uh, culture. And uh, she also addressed the point that uh, everything we do is uh, in a certain type of uh, mo mode of nature and uh, she used the example like like uh, hair styles and what is uh, in the mode of ignorance and what is in the mode of passion 
and uh, I really remember how uh, she uh, made the point that there is a different ha hairstyle which is in the mode of uh, goodness, but uh, there is the other that uh, which is uh, transcendental when it's not uh, just uh, uh, in a certain type of way, but when the head is uh, is covered, it's uh, it's the transcendental one, and. Uh, yeah, it, it just uh, is interesting. Yeah, yeah. All the exter externals from the bodily point of view are within the modes of material nature, but Krishna consciousness or God consciousness, real God consciousness, is outside of the modes of material nature. Mm -hmm. It's this. It's the soul's direct relationship with Krishna. The means to achieve that is the is a process of devotion. So as Prabhupada said, you can do it if you follow the pure process of devotional service. And either way, in whether you follow this way or that way, the idea is to become God conscious. If you don't become God conscious, then no matter what you do, no matter how good it looks or how uh, much everybody else is doing it, 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 it should be rejected. The goal is to become Krishna conscious or God conscious. Yeah, it's just uh, interesting for me that, uh, as I understand, that many of the externals have. Uh, oh, sorry. So many of the externals have some some reason, but uh, we we somehow don't know the reason and just got stuck on the externals like. Uh, yeah, I have to put my uh, sari on my head and it always slips down, but uh, we, we don't tend to remember that uh, the main point is not that it's a sari or uh, like that, but uh, to, to cover the head and uh, that is transcendental. So, as I understand, uh, actually Vedic culture is so detailed that everything has a, has a reason uh, behind it. Well, the externals, uh, servers and rituals, they lead, they are not transcendental necessarily, but they lead to the transcendental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do anything you want and call it religion, then you may find yourself doing something that's sinful mm -hmm. or against religion. So there are things that are supportive of religious activity or spiritual activity, and those, those things are not. Well, those things are given to us in the scriptures like that. Just like it says, we should eat, but we should eat prashanam. We should follow the principles of cleanliness and preparing food and, and offering food. All those things are part of the devotional pr process. They are, they are essential. So when it comes right down to it, all these principles have to be, they can't be in the lower modes of passion and ignorance. They have to be recognized either transcendental or within the mode of goodness, at least. Yes. Thank you very much. It really, really uh, clarified it for me. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, Uh, Guru Maharaj, I just would like to share this uh, amazing miracle story because today's class is completely illustrated by this miracle story. I want to speak about my 86-year-old father. In uh, 2007, I practically begged him to start chanting the holy names because he was going in for cardiac bypass surgery. And somehow, by Krishna's mercy, your mercy, he agreed. And he began chanting a little bit, just some, not with any faith or conviction, more, I think, to humor me and seeing how intent I was on that. He was chanting a little bit, a little bit every day, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at a time, not very convinced, but he was doing it regularly, regularly like clockwork, four times a day for five minutes before every meal he would chant. And he was chanting different names of God, but he was also chanting Mahamantra. 
cut or rather fast forward to six months ago, he had a very severe health crisis. He almost lost his life. And from that time on, he became so much more serious. Just yesterday, he was telling me, in these six months, I have become a better person. Krishna has saved my life. It is really a miracle that I'm alive. Someone who thought money is God now is acknowledging Krishna is God. <laughs> so every point you said in this uh, class today that the materialists, they don't, you know, they need a health crisis or some severe crisis to come around. And then you said, we are seeing the results by those who practice. He turned so little, just five minutes, four times a day is practically nothing but still he is getting benefited. I just want to thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your mercy. Jai Ho. <laughs> hey, your father is this, he's an intelligent person. He knows how to distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. But he's a good, you know, he's got good karma for making money. Yes, that's true. And that's what he thought was God, you know, it's money, money, money all the time. But all these things which have changed. He's got, the karma. he's got the karma too. He makes money easy where some people would work years to make what he makes in like one day, you know. Right, right. I just hope we can use it for Krishna's service someday. <laughs> that's, a, that's where you come in. I pray for your mercy for that to happen, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so maybe we can... So any more questions? We still have about seven minutes left. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Adibo, Mother Shilpa. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you. I had a quick question, Maharaj, on this. Um, so how important is it to be wider read on other religion scriptures in order to preach effectively? Because um, it's not necessary. If you know your own scriptures, that's, that's good enough. If you know how to present what you have, then you can understand the same thing that's coming from other traditions based on your, the knowledge of your own. Mm -hmm. The more you go deeper in your own scriptures, the more you understand the principles of religion in a broader sense also. There's people who think that's necessary to study these things, but Prabhupada said it's not. It may be helpful in very incidental cases, but in generally, no. Mm -hmm. Because when you quote other people's scriptures to convince them about their own, about the principles that their scriptures say, they don't really appreciate that. But if you present it from your own thing, mm -hmm. and you are convinced that has more potency. But sometimes what happens is they might quote something from their own um, from their own scriptures and should we just not know basic of uh, fundamentals in the scripture so we can have a valid um, standpoint? And no, not all, you, all you have to know is that same principle in your own scripture and you can understand what, it, what they're saying and you can explain it. You can either confirm it through your own or show, uh, show how it, is, it falls short in explaining, you know, what they're trying to explain. You know, just like 
we don't we tell we I, I mean I have some knowledge of Christianity because I grew up in it and I can quote but you know I only use it in emergencies generally I just preach your own scripture emergencies means when when they can't get it right <laughs> finally you give it and you know but it, because I've seen people who like to adopt other people's scriptures and speak about truth based on what they what they learn from others, but the people who follow that scripture don't appreciate that so much. You you have more potency when you when you follow what you when you quote what you're following because you're following the same thing. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if you don't understand their scripture, is it then better uh, not to get confrontational rather than preach your own point? Yeah, no, yeah. We don't want, devotees are not confrontational anyway. Mm. We present. We present the truth, people will accept or not accept. That's right. Unless you have a, a formal debate program going on where it's already lined up in that way, then that's one thing. But if you're just talking to people, then you just better not to get confrontational because not, not, nothing ever changes by confrontation. Not in this age. In, pre, in the early part of this age, it was different. People would, they would get into discussions, and if they were defeated, they would accept the superior philosophy. But people are not like that now. Generally, you don't waste time with debate. <laughs> It's another form of mental, you know, disturbances. The argumented mentality. So sometimes it's better to walk away if we don't agree with another religion's principle or ideas. You can speak. But if you're getting to confrontations and arguments, then you'll find it'll go on forever and nothing will ever change. You present, that's all. This is the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. This is based on our scripture. And if you can show the results by pointing to people who are following what you say and show the example that they are achieving or the position they're achieving by following that. Like people say, well, Krishna, he's, he's, you know, he has so many girlfriends and therefore he's, he's a lusty guy, he's polluted, you know. So we say, well, we're chanting Hare Krishna and because we're chanting Krishna's name, we're becoming purified. So how can Krishna be polluted if we're becoming purified by chanting his name? And we tell him, chant every name of God. So you try to find what is, what we say, similar in each of the scriptures. And then you present your understanding. That's all. You know, we asked him, well, what is the goal of religion? The Prabhupada was also, when people will say, well, I'm a Christian. And Prabhupada say, would say, when people say that, what do you tell them? Then you have to follow what Christ says. If you don't follow what Christ says, then you're not a Christian. You might do so many other things. So all you have to know is your own religion. 
are you having illicit affairs? Are you uh, eating, you know, slaughtered animals? Are you taking intoxication? How can you say you're religious? These are sinful activities. These are some arguments. Guru Maharaj, I just want to interject uh, with uh, Shilpa's questions to clarify. At this point, when we say that you have to follow what Christ says, thou shall not kill, they, then they come up with many, many excuses. They quote their Bible saying, uh, Jesus ate fish, Jesus did that, Jesus did this, and so on. They justify animal killing by quoting their own scriptures. Did Jesus open slaughterhouses too? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's what they're getting, slaughterhouse food. <laughs> but they don't seem to think that they should follow this instruction, thou shall not kill. No, all you have to do is say, you know, well, okay, Jesus, yeah, Jesus was in the desert for 40 days. They had nothing, and so he performed a miracle, and he produced, you know, fish. Uh, but uh, does that mean he opened up a slaughterhouse? They say Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra, also ate meat. But did he? Did he? Did he propagate animal killing and open up, you know, business for selling meat? <laughs> That's what they're getting. You know, they're getting slaughterhouse food that is made simply for done for economic development. That's all. It has nothing to do with moral or religious principles at all. You, yeah, you listen to Prabhupada, you understand these arguments. Yeah. Or, you know, a lot of people realize that meat, meat is not healthy. You can also talk about the unhealthy nature of meat. It's very unhealthy. It's not a good food. It's a food in a mode of passion and ignorance, and it causes one to get a strong rush of energy, which later dissipates in time. You know. Meeting, meeting causes so many problems. Heart, heart attacks, strokes, clogged arteries, forms of cancer, there's a lot, you know, all you have to do is show the connection between bad health and meat eating. There's so much information on that. You're not even getting into the religious thing. You're just from that perspective. But, we'll, you know, we're not vegetarians either. We're Krishnatarians. Baba said, if Krishna tells us to eat meat, we will. <laughs> but he, did, he doesn't tell us that. He tells, he tells you in the Bhagavad Gita what you should eat and what you should offer to him. You know? So we follow Krishna. That's we follow the laws of God. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, may I uh, share one, one of my very favorite uh, pastimes of uh, Srila Prabhupada connected to different religions? It's not, not long. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I read it was uh, the memory of uh, Giriraj Swami. And he said that uh, at one time uh, he, he was preaching in, in Madras and uh, there are many uh, Shaivit uh, people there. And um, uh, he had uh, two times uh, quite uh, um, so uh, an argument with uh, with one one people like this. And uh, in the end, um, uh, once when Prabhupada uh, came to this uh, area, uh, Prabhupada met with this person, 
and uh, he didn't start this uh, this same thing to say yeah uh, i believe like this and you believe like that uh, she had a tot uh, he had a totally different uh, approach and it was very nice i just read this part because this is uh, very nicely explained that uh, propa took a different approach he didn't enter into the polemics about who was supreme rather he said there are two words in sanskrit puja and bhakti in uh, puja one worships the deity to get some material benefit and in bhakti one worships only to give pleasure to the deity without expectation of personal return the worshippers of shiva engage in puja they worship to get some material benefit whereas uh, in bhakti we worship krishna for the sake of krishna's pleasure just to please him uh, so uh, mr uh, ramakrishna asked is it not possible to worship shiva in the mood of bhakti uh, it is possible, Prabhupada uh, replied, but it would be exceptional. For example, generally people go to a liquor shop to buy liquor. Now one uh, could go to, uh, for another, another purpose, but that would be the exception. Generally people go to buy liquor. Mr. Ramakrishna was satisfied with the answer. Srila Prabhupada did not enter into the uh, controversy over which deity was the supreme. Uh, rather, he ex explained different moods in uh, in the worship of the different deities. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, there's, a way, there's ways to, to present the truth without arguing just by logically pointing out certain things. Yeah. Krishna Prima Mataji, you have a question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. May I, I ask a question? Uh, yes, please. Um, so I would like to ask um, how to preach to the relatives. I mean, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, because now I have a very interesting situation. All my relatives, they are in Belarus. And when I was in Belarus, I was just uh, feeding them with prasadam. I was, uh, I cooked a lot and they were, they were more kind. And now political situation in Belarus is really horrible. And um, all the time when I speak with them, um, they have such faith in new president that new president will come and save them, that everything will change. And actually they are very aggressive now. And many times I just don't know how to speak with them, what to do, and uh, because I cannot give prasadam them now. And uh, so what to do with relatives who believe in new president and their faith is so strong? Well, they'll have to learn the hard way. That's all. <laughs> You can lead a dog to, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Being so distanced from them, it's pretty hard to really communicate. It is, it's, I would just say, you know, if you really want to help them, you know, encourage them to read Srila Prabhupada's books. That's all. Tell them if, they're, if they want to read about politics, then they can read the first canto. There's a lot of politics in the first canto. They like politics. Yeah, thank you. If they don't want to read Bhagavatam, you can have them read the Mahabharata. That's full of politics. <laughs> At least they get some culture if they read that. They, they inclined to read? Uh, I, th I think that now they are mostly into watching news, what is happening and how it's dangerous in Belarus and all these things. But I can try. Well, the news doesn't give you anything. It just tells you what they, what, what they want to tell you. News is just, it's just, it's not, news is not what's really happening. It's what they want you to know, that's all. News is all propaganda, that's all it is. I have a statement from a, a news reporter who worked for the New York Times for 50 years. And when he retired, 
he gave a speech to his to the fellow newspersons who were there from different agencies. And he said, we're all prostitutes. We just, we can't, we can't write what we want to write. We have to write what, what, what we're told to write. We have a mission from inside that, you know, news is just, it's just propaganda, that's all. They want to, if they want to bring, give you a certain mindset, they'll give you a certain set of news that'll help you develop that mindset. Just like the COVID thing, they want to create fear. So they just give you all the statistics about people dying and so many things like that. So it's all about creating fear. So when you create fear, then you confuse people. And then when you confuse people, then you can give them something out later. They, oh, well, here's the solution to your fear and your confusion. And that's what they're all about. They want to sell their products. They want to, you know, restrict people, create fear and then give them the solution. So it's all, it's all, it's all propaganda. Politics means to, to just, just to control, try to control, control, control. So whether it's this side or that side, Pallad Maharaj says, politics means the, the people who are in, they want to stay in. The people who are out, they want to get in. And he said, that's politics. That's all. <laughs> Prabhupada well, just, just said that, you know, just like in India, they were trying, you know, for years they wanted to kick out the British. So they kicked out the British, but finally the country got divided. Now you have Pakistan and India. And after, now you, you got rid of one problem, you got another problem. Politics is not a solution to anything. Not at least modern day politics is not. So if you really, I would just tell him, you know, you're just being brainwashed by whatever you hear. <laughs> so, once you convince them that what they're hearing is, is all lies and propaganda, then you might be able to say something on the positive level, or on the spiritual level that they might but once, but as long as they're convinced that whatever they hear is what they want to hear and it's good for them, and yeah, you know, it'll go on like that. Just like even in our, even in the world today, people are believing all this news that is coming out. That's all. It's all. It's all to get people f full of fear. That's all. Thank you very much. It's helpful, you, very helpful. Yeah, when you when you create fear, you can control people. That's modern day politics. Create fear and can create the means to control them. Krishna consciousness is based on love, <laughs> not on fear and propaganda and all this other stuff. Tell them if they want to be happy, just try to love God. That's all. <laughs> you want to be happy? Everyone wants to be happy. All right. So, here. Yeah. Give your love to God. Learn about God. Pray to God. <laughs> Don't get anything, anything specific. Just stay, just keep it general. That's all. So okay. Good. Yep. Thank you. All right. So we should end here. We're 15 minutes over. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I hope okay. this time works for everybody. I'm still the half hour earlier, but um, I was hoping it would be suitable. And I think we had a good number of participants today and had the 34 people at one time.
Yes, Guru Maharaj. So we did have a good participants today. It looks like this time is better. Everyone seems to be joining on. Yep. So thank you okay, so much, Guru so Maharaj, uh, for your association and valuable time today afternoon. And uh, thank you so much, at devotees, for attending today's session. And the Koti Vaishnav Vrinde ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Dev ki jai. Guru Maharaj, you are Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Guru Maharaj, today? I didn't hear that. I didn't hear what you said. I said, would you have time to chant one round with us today? No, not today. It's not going to work today for me. Okay. I'm sorry. You, you. You, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Go ahead. Everyone can do it. <laughs> but today, today, it's not a good day for me. I have a 